In my last video, I spent 100 days in hardcore modded 1.17, and that journey had a few close calls and was the start of a long challenge to attempt to survive 1000 days in hardcore Minecraft. But today we are back for stage 2 where I will be surviving 200 days in hardcore Minecraft. If you want to follow along with the rest of this series and haven't seen part 1, feel free to subscribe to the channel and check that out. But for now, I hope you enjoy 200 days in modded 1.17 hardcore. So, on my first day back, I remembered I had some villagers trapped inside of a fenced off area, and decided it was time to give these guys a real home, and allow myself to breed them to get so many more villagers. So, I set off to start my brand new build, and after a little bit of building, and going for a similar style to the previous villager trading station, this thing was complete. But, of course, since this place was for breeding, I needed lots of beds, so I had to set off to share some sheep. And once I had the beds I needed, I was able to lure these guys straight over to the hut and start the breeding process. I also found this super cool hole in the mountain afterwards, that hopefully I can build something inside of in the future. And once I returned home, I enchanted a new diamond pickaxe that I was able to get an amazing enchantment on. But to get ready for when I do eventually make something inside of that mountain in the future, I needed a path out of the jungle towards that area, so that's what I started working on. As usual, this took a few days, but I kept the theme of the village going through it, and it turned out great. But after this, I realised my elytra was almost broken, so it was time to start working on getting a mending villager, so that I can repair this thing and get my elytra back up to full potential. Luckily, I didn't have to refresh this thing for too long before I got what I needed, so I splashed all of my emeralds on a bunch of mending books, and I was able to apply one to each piece of armor and tool that I had. So now, with many new villagers in the hut, it was time to start giving some more of these guys more jobs, and one of those jobs was a cartographer. There is a mod in this mod pack that brings seven new villager professions into this game, but for now, I'm sticking with one that I know, since I want to take on a woodlands mansion. So before I could trade this guy for an explorer map, I needed to upgrade him, meaning that I needed a huge sugarcane farm to give me paper to allow me to keep upgrading him. Eventually, I will make an automatic sugarcane farm that just makes me thousands of pieces of sugarcane cane every single day, but for now, this will do the job. But finally, after some upgrading and trading with the cartographer, I was offered the Woodlands Mansion Explorer map, and was able to start preparing for the trip. This included staying up late one night fighting off the creepers in the plains, to gather as much gunpowder as I could for rockets. And I decided to make a load of golden apples, just to keep me safe when fighting those vindicators. And on day 111, I set off towards the mansion. On the way there, I stumbled across a huge desert temple. This is a modded structure from the most structures mod, meaning that I was expecting the loot inside of here to be incredible, and I can confidently say I was not disappointed. Alright, what is going on in here? Is there any good- Oh, a spawner. Nice, okay. I was greeted by skeletons guarding iron, gold, and even diamonds. And the more I explored this place, the better the loot became. And that was when I found the basement. All right, there's a basement. I can hear them down there. What is this? Come on. Oh, oh, wow. oh, oh, okay. This place had four skeleton spawners, chest loot, gold blocks, and so many diamonds. But as expected, this place was not all good. Okay, right. I don't want to break the spawners because I can turn this into like a farm, maybe. Oh, but these are getting annoying. Come on. I just want to get the loot. It's gold blocks and everything. What's going on? How much more loot's down here? Diamonds! Jeez! This place has got loads of diamonds. Okay. Alright, give me this gold. This is not being left behind. Not a chance. Alright. Do not press me! Okay, that's just... This is gonna be a trap. I can already tell it's gonna be... Oh, yep. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, okay. That was just... That was guaranteed. Wow, that's loud. Yep, this place trolled me with a false sign trap, and the temple was destroyed. So I set back off on the search for the Woodlands Mansion. On the way, I found another desert pyramid, and after looking at all of the loot that I got from the last place, I knew I couldn't turn down the loot inside of this one too. So I entered and cleared this place out. Alright, round two. What are we going to have inside of this one? Come on. Oh, more diamonds. Yes, please. I will take those. So with a bunch more loot, I continued my adventure once again. 
which may or may not have resulted in me entering yet again another pyramid after finding a third one on the way to the mansion. But eventually, on day 113, I found the mansion that I had been looking for. In all its glory, this colossal structure stood in a dark forest plains. But after looting three desert temples, I quickly had the realization that I had no inventory room to gather anything from this place. So I decided to take note of the coordinates and head back home to clear my inventory. After doing that successfully, I set back off towards the mansion. And on day 116, I arrived ready to take on all of the hostile mobs inside. At first, this place seemed like a ghost town. But after checking out a few rooms, the pillagers made their way to me and started dealing some damage. Stay back. Stay away from me. Oh, the punch on this bow is great. Oh, missed. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, skeleton. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Steady on. Dude, just give me a break. Eventually, I found the Evoker Room, and I was able to take this guy down with some range. And thankfully, I was able to secure my first Totem of Undying. Oh, yes. Okay, first Totem of this world. Can I get any more in here? Oh, once this guy's gone. Next is... Where are you? What? Oh, my God. He's getting me through the wall. All right. Where are you? You're in here somewhere, aren't you? Get... Give me... Oh, my... Right, okay. How... No. There's, there's no Evoker in here. How is it? Where is it coming from? What's going on? I was just in this room. There's no evoker in. What? what? What is happening? Where am I getting hit from? There's no evoker here. Vexus, leave me alone! Oh my... I am so confused. Right, just let me get the bookshelves. This evoker... There's an evoker in here somewhere. It's like hidden. I can't see him. These guys are doing so much damage. Oh my. Just let me get the books, please. I want to take these home. All right. Oh, God. Th this is getting chaotic now. Oh, there he is. This is a different one, though. Oh, oh, my heart's... Oh, no. Okay. Just heal up. Steady, steady. Okay. Take down the Vindicator first. Why is there so many Vexes? Oh, what is going on? All right. Give me that totem. There's a totem around here somewhere. Yep, there it is. But after finally a long day of battling and gathering loot, I was able to leave this place alive with so much stuff to help me tell the tale with. The next day after arriving home, I set back off towards the nether. As many of you guys told me in part one, I need netherite armor in this world. So it was time to start strip mining for some ancient debris to upgrade it. After six days and two pickaxes of strip mining, I left the nether with 37 ancient debris. Enough for nine netherite ingots, which allowed me to upgrade my entire armor set and all of my tools. Helmet, chest plate, leggings, boots, oh yes. And of course, with the one remaining ingot, it was only right to complete the achievement of getting a netherite hoe. Ooh, I am seriously rich. So with my brand new netherite axe, I set off for a few days to chop down a bunch of oak trees for a brand new build. I wanted to clear a new part of the jungle and start my own village kingdom on the water's edge. So that's exactly what I started doing. As expected, this jungle was super dense and it took a long time to clear out. But after a load of time had passed, I was able to start working on the first of many builds in this kingdom. These are watchtowers which I wanted to attach walls and gates to. So that's exactly what I did. And once the kingdom entrance was complete, it was time to start working on the village within. And it was only right to start with a dorm area where all of the villagers could sleep, breed and just chill if they wanted to. I think this build turned out great, but that was the first of many since I wanted to get right to work on the new smeltery slash blacksmith build that I could use as a cooking station. And finally on day 143, this kingdom was starting to show some real signs of progress. So after building for a huge length of time, it was time for some action, and that meant trading with the villagers for a ocean explorer map. 
But before I took on an ocean monument, I needed some water breathing potions to help me take down the elder guardians inside. So I set off once again with my rockets to hunt down some puffer fish. I was able to spear fish a few of these guys and then take them back to brew them up into an amazing drink. And then on day 146, I set off with my potions and my map to hunt down this underwater city and take on all of the hostile creatures. Aha, right, here we go. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Time. Oh my, there's a lot of guardians there. Alright, let's just go for it. Here we go. Straight in. Alright, just avoid the guardians. Oh, one right at the door. Just, yeah, let me try and find... Oh, there's an Elder Guardian right here. Alright, let's, uh, let's start dealing some damage. I should have brought some uh, strength potions. Oh, okay, he's down. He's down, he's down. Okay, let's get... Does he drop a sponge or something? Oh, yeah, okay, I got one. Got one, nice. Okay, Guardian, leave me alone. Oh, that is a lot of sponges. I want to remember that area. I think there's some gold in there as well, but I need, uh, I need to get rid of the mining team. Boom. Okay. Second Elder Guardian. Here we go. Hopefully, this guy doesn't do too much damage. Come on. Surely soon he's gonna... Come on. Hey, there we go. Alright, two down. Need to heal up, though, a little bit. God. Alright, Numero Tress. Here we go. The third guy. Let's take this guy down. Whoa! He, okay, he, he's doing some damage. Finally, all three Elder Guardians were down, and I was able to explore this place without getting any more mining fatigue. So I headed straight over to the sponges I found earlier and started gathering them all. Alright, well, thanks for a good time, Monument. I definitely want to do something with this in the future. No doubt. When I returned home, it seemed the villager huts had spawned a few too many iron golems around here, so I had to take care of them. And once I had, it was time to make a new storage tower, since my small barn was starting to slightly run low on room. I went with a similar design to the rest of the village, and as usual, it looked great in my opinion. Day 152, I made my first real modded tool, the mattock. This is a multi-tool that will mine all blocks like wood, stone, gravel, or obsidian at the same speed. So I set off to put this thing to use. Remember those large pyramids I was exploring earlier in the video? Well, I wanted to convert one of those into a skeleton farm with the spawners inside. So I made my way all the way back to one and started reconstructing this place. And after much remodeling and building, this place was done, and was actually working super efficiently for now. So now I'm able to farm XP at a much quicker rate to repair my tools and armor whenever needed. Alright, I've AFK'd this for a minute, how much are we gonna get? Okay, sweeping edge- Oh, that was a lot of XP. Oh, my sword's repaired! Whilst I was here doing some grinding, I spotted a horde of pillagers wandering around the desert, so decided to snipe them and gain myself bad omen. I remembered on my way here that I saw a villager market, so I went back to that and started a raid. Once the raid started, I quickly saw a no pillager sign, which I clearly didn't respect this rule. But either way, the raid had started and now it was time to battle. This was my first raid of this world, and even though it was only a level 1 raid, I was really caught off guard with these pillagers' power. Luckily, the Iron Golems came through and really helped out. But later on in this world, I most definitely want to do a level 5 or even level 6 raid at some point. Finally, after a long battle, the market had been saved from the raiders, and I was able to leave these guys to live another day. And when I returned home, I was able to line up all of my brand new Totems of Undying. But as always, after some action must always follow some relaxing building, so I spent some time working on a wooden bridge right outside of the kingdom doors, and then got right back to the mods after.
As I mentioned earlier in this world, there is a mod that adds seven brand new villager jobs, which allows me to trade for super cool items that I usually wouldn't be able to trade for. Some of the new jobs are oceanographers, foresters, hunters, netherian, engineers, and florists. So I got right to work on gathering all of the workstations for these job roles, and then checked out all of their trades. The forester offered me emeralds for saplings, and I had a load of them lying around from my wood chopping journey earlier in this video. So I got as many emeralds as possible from this guy, and then also found out that the hunter traded for bones. So I took this opportunity to use my skeleton farm again, and gain an insane amount of bones to trade with the hunter. So I headed home with all of the bones I collected and started trading. But then, tragedy struck. No! Oh, stupid. Oh, I hate creepers. Oh my god. No, stop trying to get out. Wait, no. No! I can't stop. No! I wasn't paying attention and a creeper blew up the house, letting most of the villagers free. So with this place ruined and it being quite messy anyway with all of the villagers just roaming around, I decided to start working on a new single file hut in the kingdom to allow everything to become a little bit more organized. And well, as I was giving them jobs... No, not again! Oh. But anyway, after that happened, I upgraded my oceanographer, and now he offered a trident as a trade. And since these usually take at least 10 days for me to get when searching the ocean, I swooped at the opportunity to trade for one, and bought one straight away. And with one new weapon came a new tool. I made myself a scythe, which is basically a modded hoe that makes farming so much easier than normal. But I was quite quickly distracted from the farming, since I remembered that there was one more villager job that required endstone and purple blocks to make, so I had to make a quick trip back to the end portal. But on my way there, I came across a huge castle structure in the wild. I had no idea what this was or what was inside, so I decided to take note of the coordinates and come back for another time, when I will be much more prepared to take this thing on. But nonetheless, I made my way to the end portal and dived through. All I needed was a few blocks, and then I was going to leave. But of course, I ended up inside of a brand new end city and got another elytra in the process. But then I left with everything I needed, and when I returned home, I made a purple altar, which made a villager into an enderologist. I started upgrading this guy, and after a few days, he was offering me 8 fireworks for 3 emeralds. Honestly, one of the best trades I have ever seen from a villager. So of course, I took full advantage of this and got as many fireworks as I could. And to make sure I could secure as many firework trades as I needed, I started on a new villager hut built into the cliff, made entirely for stick trades. Honestly, I did so much stick trading at this thing. And from all of the emeralds that I got from here, I was able to go to the enderologist and trade for a bunch of shulker crates to finally turn my tower into a working storage tower. So then, on day 180, I lived up to my word. I prepared myself to take on the castle in the wild, and then headed over. When I entered this place, it seemed like nothing more than an abandoned castle. Almost like a stronghold, but above the ground. But I was so incredibly wrong. This place was filled with mobs, loot, secret rooms, and so much more. Nothing could prepare me for the amount of mobs living inside of this thing. Okay, this... This place just looks... Okay, Creeper, leave me alone. Oh, uh, there we go. Come on. It looks like a stronghold. So many spawners in here. I wonder if I can silk touch these. I have no idea. No, I didn't try this. Why didn't I try this? How many zombies? Oh, there's definitely a zombie spawner around here. How many? Are... They just keep coming. There's hordes of these guys. So after spending almost three days inside of this place, I decided it was time to leave. There was so much more loot in here for me to come back to, but I was starting to run low on golden apples, so I wanted to go back home and prepare a little bit more. So when I got back, I made a bunch more golden apples and grabbed a silk touch pickaxe to try and see if the mods would let me pick up the spawners. And when I returned and tried mining one, it worked. I could mine all of these spawners and take them home. So I went on a field day inside of here and started clearing this place out completely to take out all of these spawners. 
And of course, I had to tackle a lot of hostile mobs along the way. But with over a stack of spawners, I left on the night of day 183 and headed home. I knew exactly what I needed to do, and that was to make a mob spawner that allows me to grind creepers for infinite gunpowder out of these spawners. And oh my lord, this thing couldn't have worked any better. Every few seconds, a load of creepers would fall down into my trap, and now I was able to make as many fireworks as I'll ever need. But of course, to make fireworks, I need paper. So I started working on a quick automatic sugarcane farm inside of the kingdom walls to supply that need. And on day 190, I remembered the mountain that I had seen earlier in this video, and really wanted to make something out of it. So decided to make a much larger scale mob farm built inside of the mountain. And as I thought the other one was good, this one was 10 times better. And I was getting so much loot from this thing and it was automatic. So whilst that thing worked away in the background, I decided to set off and try and find some more stuff in this world before this video came to an end. And after not too long, I came across this hole. I had no clue what was inside, so I dived in. It looks like another stronghold, but it turned out to be an underground village. This was the first one that I had seen in this world, and it was really cool. Unfortunately, there wasn't much cool loot inside, but there's a load of villagers in here, and this would definitely be something really cool to revamp and turn into something different. The more I explored this place, the more rooms I found. I found iron golems, abandoned areas, farms. There was so much down here. So if you want to see me convert this into something, let me know in the comments down below and give me an idea of what to convert it into. But for now, I'm going to leave this place and head back up to the surface. Oh, and when I came up, I found another one of these huge castles. I have definitely got infinite spawners in this world. So I decided to spend the rest of today sitting around waiting for the creepers to fall into my trap so I could get a load of gunpowder and turn it all into TNT because I've seen a few YouTubers going to the nether and exploding a load of TNT to try and find some ancient debris. So I wanted to give it a try myself. So I traveled over to my portals, started a huge strip mine and then started stacking up the TNT all the way through it to set on fire. And after a while, one of the TNT actually caught on fire on its own, so the train was set off. And wow, this tunnel was massive. Unfortunately, it wasn't the smoothest explosion, it had to go in stages, but I did find quite a bit of ancient debris. It probably would have just been a lot quicker for me to strip mine regularly, but I was bored and I had a lot of TNT lying around, so I just wanted to use it. And I was able to leave with 16 pieces of ancient debris, which is enough for four ingers. I don't need any more netherite, but at least I have it now. And when I returned, it was right towards the end of day 199. So with no real time to start any more huge tasks, I just decided to extend my bridge as much as possible in the remaining time. And that did go into day 200, but since that technically is part of the challenge, I decided to finish it off all through day 200, and then the bridge was complete. And then that was it. 200 days in 1.17 modded hardcore. The more this series goes on, the more mods I'm going to be adding and the more crazy this world is going to get. So I'm super excited to hit maybe 300, 400 and 500 days in this world. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you guys are new around here. And I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Peace.